Hey guys, got another quick tip for you. We're gonna look at how to do this cool slicing effect pretty easily and without using any plugins. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, first thing you need is a Verone Fracture. We're gonna go ahead and drop the statue in there and drop in a random effector. We're gonna get just a sort of a rough exploded view so we can see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and apply that into our effectors here. Go to our random, let's go ahead and turn some of these parameters down, like 10, I don't need a lot. Right away, uh, there's a pretty obvious problem is we need to fill in some of these holes. This is what'll happen if your geometry, if it's got a missing polygon somewhere and it's not a closed piece of geometry. There's a very easy fix for that in our fracture. If we could just go to our object and we do optimize and close holes. And there we go. Now we have all of our fracture pieces. Pretty cool, but not what we want. Let's go ahead and go into our sources and go ahead and turn off our point generator. We're not going to use that. What we do want to do is let's go ahead and grab our uh, spline pen tool. We want to create a line going um, perfectly straight down the middle of this geometry, and that's going to be uh, what we source our Verone points onto. So to make sure we're drawing a straight line, let's go ahead and middle click, and it'll bring up all your different views. And we're just going to go with the front view, middle click again in that window and that'll maximize it. Let's go ahead and turn on snapping with shift S. And now you can see it's trying to snap to points. You want to go up to here. So our actual snapping toggle is right here. And then this thing here is your uh, snapping settings. And by default, um, grid work plane's usually off, but you want to make sure that's on. Now you can see it is snapping directly to the grid. And that's really helpful for making sure we want to draw a straight line. So go ahead and click here and then click somewhere up here. Just want to make sure we're encompassing the whole model. And we're done, you just hit escape. Great, so go ahead and middle click again. Go back to our perspective view, middle click. Oh, uh, I'm gonna turn off snapping. Okay, so we've got our line. Let's go ahead and put that somewhere in the middle of our mesh. So now we go to our Verone Fracture and we're gonna drop our spline right into our sources. And there you go. So all this is doing is using the spline, and you can actually see the little green points that it's dropping on. And because of the way the Verona fracture works, since these are evenly spaced out, it's giving us even slices. Um, this would even work, actually, if you were to rotate this spline to say, you know, I don't know, 30 degrees or whatever. And you can get some cool angled slices as well. And so now from there, it's just kind of tweaking. So let's go ahead and um, I like having a lot of points for this particular scene, let's say 200. That's gonna give us a lot of slices, probably too many, but check this out. If we want to give it a little bit of randomness, we go to geometry glue and we just go ahead and enable geometry glue. And in this drop down menu, just go to clusters. And all Clusters is doing is just saying, okay, just randomly pick slices to include in our cluster, and we're going to have a maximum of five clusters. Um, so we've got 200 pieces, um, and we're reducing that down to essentially five randomly sized. Uh, let's say like 150, like a nice high number. That might even be too high. Let's say 50. Cool. So now we got some randomness, which is really nice. Um, so we have you know, rows of smaller sections, and then we got these bigger sections. And of course you can mess with your cluster seed, and then you'll just get a different result until you find something you like. I'm cool with that. Now we just want to maybe tweak our random effector a little bit. Uh, let's just go to our parameter. Um, I don't want it to move up and down, so we'll go ahead and make that zero. There we go. That's looking a little more, a little more believable. Okay, so we just go ahead and drop in our marble material. I'm just using this marble material from the Grayscale Gorilla Collection. I highly recommend this. If you just get one plugin or one set of tools, this is like everything you need to get started in Cinema 4D. I use this in almost every project. Let's see how that looks. Go to Redshift, Render View. We want to get that really cool stark red on the inside faces. That's pretty easy. We just go to our Verone Fracture and go to Selections, and we'll go ahead and toggle on Inside Faces. And you'll see that actually gives us a polygon selection tag right on our Verona Fracture. In fact, let's go ahead and put our marble onto our Verona Fracture. And then I've got this other marble texture, which is just the same thing, tinted red. We're going to drop that on. And then bring that selection onto there, the inside faces. Drag and drop. And there it is. Two very cool effect. 
And of course, like everything else that is wonderful in Cinema 4D, this thing does let you use MoGraph. So we can even go into our random effector. And if you wanted, you could even drop in like a, let's say a spherical field. And now we've got like some control over what actually gets this, you know, this randomness, which is pretty cool. And then let's say you won't even wanted to animate this on. So let's go ahead and drop in a plane effector. Make sure we apply that to our effectors. And of course, we just want to go ahead and grab a linear field. Go ahead and rotate that. Uh, and pretty quick, you can see some of the fun stuff you can do with this. Maybe we go ahead and go to parameter, scale this. You know, I always like to have things scale on, so negative one on the absolute. So now, whoa. There's obviously a lot of cool stuff you can do with this, so thanks for watching, and I hope this helps somebody out.